Today's Merch Design Episode 18 is sponsored by Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring and creative courses for curious people like us. One of my favorite courses recently is one by Aaron Draplin where he teaches merch design, and that's just one of many courses that you can find on Skillshare. Skillshare is designed from the ground up for learning, which means there are no ads and they're always launching new premium courses. Endless amounts of learning, guys, all for less than $10 a month with an annual subscription. First 1,000 people to use this link will get a free trial of Skillshare Premium. Pretty awesome. So yeah, sign up, guys. After this video, of course, we're going to get started on Merch Design Episode 18. Let's get it. I'm in Photoshop with a 14-inch by 18-inch document at 300 resolution. I'm now importing all of my assets to make this awesome Darth Vader t-shirt design. First things first, I have to remove Darth Vader from his background. Let's get it. the latest version of Photoshop, you will see select subject, which is what I used to isolate Darth Vader, cut him out of his background. I made some small adjustments on his layer mask and I am left with a beautiful selection. The layer that Darth Vader is on is a smart object. Now, anytime I make adjustments, it will basically clip to his layer. And if I need to make any adjustments later on, I can do that without working destructively, which is awesome. So now I'm just adding a hue and saturation adjustment desaturating him and then I'm gonna mess with some curves and levels to add some contrast to him and bring out different tones like the highlights which is something that I really like to do especially working on a dark background When I'm designing merch, I really like to layer my designs to build more complex designs, right? Obviously, I don't want to just use Darth Vader and then just call it a day, right? I want to add different things to it in order to make it my own and make it so much more unique. So I'm adding some different elements, as you can see. This one didn't end up working out, though, so I end up getting rid of it. But you will see one that does work out in a second. Yo, I found these really cool clouds. I'm gonna add that behind Darth Vader. And I think this is going to work way better than that storm did. Let's try it out. And as always guys, I am adding a hue and saturation adjustment, desaturating those clouds and messing with my levels in order to bring out some of the darks to blend with my background. My background's black, which is going to be my shirt. So I want those clouds to blend in nicely in order to be a proper background piece. I don't want it to take away from Darth Vader at all. And then I added a layer mask to those clouds and I inverted it. As soon as you invert the layer mask, you can then use a soft round brush, paint white, and this will give you a really nice soft look and help you blend things so much easier. And let's not forget about Darth Vader. I have to add a layer mask to him as well and blend him into the background so he doesn't have that harsh cut. And just like magic, once we add that layer mask, we can blend the bottom of Darth Vader in. There's some sorcery going on here, guys. You know what, 
guys, I just wasn't happy. So I needed to add something else and I found these really awesome lightning strikes and I thought these would be really cool behind him and uh, kind of like a Palpatine thing, right? So I didn't like the color, obviously. Darth Vader, his lightsaber is red and you probably guessed it, I need to desaturate them and mess with the levels and then add a hue and saturation adjustment after that. That way we can add some color to them. I also want to make sure I position them and resize them so they look right in the design. If you're trying to color anything with hue and saturation, make sure you check colorize, okay? It's a little check box thingamajigger at the bottom of the hue and saturation palette. And if you do that, um, you can literally add color to anything. It's just super easy to use. Try it out, guys. That is looking good. Let's duplicate it and flip it so we have one on the right side. All right, time to add some text to our design. I'm hitting T on my keyboard to go to the type tool and I'm typing out Darth Vader in a font that I like and one that I think matches the design. I found this font on dafont.com. So if you guys search for it on dafont.com, you will find it and the name's right here on the screen. So just search for it and you will find it. But um, what I wanna do is type out his first and last name obviously and just kind of position it where I want it. Next, I wanna add a gradient overlay to both text layers. And when I'm doing this, I'm kind of just experimenting with the colors as you can see right here. I'm choosing black on the left and then I'm adding a middle color which is usually going to be a lighter color. But again, this is really all about experimentation. You really just need to just mess with the colors, guys. That's all I can say because every design is going to be different. Anytime you wanna create those harsh cuts, in your gradient, you just put the colors together, almost butting up against each other, and it will create this really cool vintage look. to create some separation from the harsh gradient and the font itself. I just want the font to be a little bit more legible. I'm just adding an inner glow to do that with red because obviously the font is red so I want the inner glow to match that. And you might be wondering why aren't you just adding an inner stroke and that's because it's a lot harsher to do it that way. When you add an inner glow it gives it a nice soft look and when you're working with retro styles I think that looks much nicer and you have the ability to add obviously some noise as well like normal. So. You can really, like I said, give it some of that texture and softer look, and I, I think it looks better. That's just my opinion. And if you really wanna spice up any font, you can also add a bevel to it, but be very, very cautious when doing this because it's easy to overdo it, and it starts to look a little cheesy, unless you're going for that sort of thing. But uh, with this one, I went very subtle with it. And in order to give the text a little bit more white to match Darth Vader's helmet, I added an inner stroke, and honestly, it kinda gives it this metallic look. I really, really liked it. You guys try it out yourself, but it's really, really cool, especially when you're pairing it with bevel options. And you never have to do these effects more than once, guys. Once you have it done once, you can copy those effects from one layer to any other layer. All right, now I'm adding a warp to the top and bottom text lines. And I believe on the top, it is going to be a lower arc. And on the bottom, it's going to be an upper arc. And as you can see, it creates this arc, right? That's what it's called. But uh, I think it looks really cool. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below, but I like it a lot. Um, honestly, it didn't need it, but I think it adds to it. But uh, this is how I did it, guys. And I, I think it turned out pretty cool. Let me know, like I said, in the comments section below. This design would not be complete without some lens flares. I went to Google, good old Google, and I found some lens flares and I just copied them into Photoshop, changed the blend mode to screen and just kind of moved them where I think they fit. And you're gonna see what it looks like in a second, but I, I like these a lot and I know they're overused, but hey, they're cool, come on guys. And you guys already know I like my textures, so I went out and found some textures and just applied it under a layer mask to give it this really nice, obviously textured look, but a softer look as well. So when I add it to my mock-up later on, 
it just makes it look more vintage. It wears it out a little bit more and it makes it more believable. Um, I feel like anytime you're doing these like vintage retro type designs, it's good to add a little bit of texture. It, it's kind of needed, honestly. I mean, you can get away with not doing it sometimes, but in most cases, I think it does add to the design. So uh, yeah, I mean, you do what you want to do though. You know, it's your life. Now on to my absolute favorite part of the process, which is finishing the artwork so I can mock it up and see what it actually looks like printed on a mock-up, a t-shirt in this instance. And I do have this vintage tee, which goes perfect with this style design, man. I love it. It's got this like torn up look. Seriously too freaking good, but uh, that's it for the design, guys. Look, I know it's a lot to take in. If you guys need to take your time, rewind the video, watch it over and over again, guys. Dissect it. Take your time. Don't rush it. You're not going to learn overnight, guys. If you're new to designing, even if you're uh, somebody that's been doing it for 10 plus years like me, you still learn new things. So don't be in a rush, guys. Take your time. I know I'm not holding your hand as much as I used to, obviously, but I think this is the best way to learn by watching me do, right? When you watch somebody else do something, you can learn so much. So it's not always about like, hey, hold my hand and show me step by step how to do something. Sometimes the process of doing something is so much more important than somebody just giving you the cheat codes, if that makes sense. So uh, anyway, had so much fun with this one, guys, and I hope you enjoyed it. You guys already know what to do. If you enjoyed the video, hit that thumbs up button. Leave me a comment in the section below. Let me know what you thought about it. And uh, if you guys want to continue learning, click on this video so you guys can do so. But uh, guys, I had so much fun and I cannot wait to make another tutorial for you guys. Oh, and keep creating, keep being awesome. Catch you guys in the next one. Peace.